All right, in uh, Seattle, and uh, gonna go on a little walk and gonna hit up a uh, sprint, some sprints on some hills up here. Uh, there's so many hills here, you can kind of have your pick, but this one's super close to the hotel, and I always choose it. People ask a lot of questions about the shoes, and today I'm wearing these Vivo Barefoot. I always forget what the name of these are, but I'm sure that we'll include it in the video so you can check them out. Um, these are great for grip. These are great for bad weather. Obviously, here in Seattle, Washington, it rains a lot. And uh, you don't want your feet to get all wet. And these are very uh, awesome with being like water resistant. Maybe not 100% waterproof, but water resistant enough to where I've worn them in Iceland. I wear them every time I come up here and they work great. Not necessarily, I wouldn't say necessarily a great running shoe, but a nice all-purpose shoe. It's a little heavy, but to me it's like, oh, I'll just get a little extra hip flexor work in there. Uh, running, running a hill is one of my favorite things to do. I think it's a great place for a lot of people to start their running journey. So whether you're young or old or whether you're big fat or short or in between I think it's the best possible place and the safest place to start um, keep in mind if you're sprinting and trying to stay away from injury that uh, a hill is going to slow you down a lot and so because of that you're less likely to get hurt so here's how I like to do it this is just the first go of it I just jog up nice and easy just real slow Nothing crazy, maybe even just walk it, big stride. Get used to the breathing that I'm gonna encounter. Get used to the hill, kind of learn it, head over foot. Can really practice head over foot on a hill. Always got to touch the post at the top. Probably can do this like maybe 10 times or so. Even, that, even though that was low intensity and I didn't go full blast on it or anything, that's still set number one. We're also getting some cold out here today. Goosebumps. Cold therapy can be done so many different ways. Doesn't always have to be in a cold plunge or a nice bath. It can simply be just expose as much of your skin as you can to the cold elements. And it is cold out here and it's windy, but it's not like unbearable, you know? It's not like it's 30 degrees. It's probably 45, maybe 40, but very windy. Can't see my breath. At least I don't think you can. Look at it out there, it looks amazing. Unbelievable. Oh, careful. Set number two here. Not gonna be done that much different than the first one because we're still just getting warm. Take, take your time, there's no rush. I like to touch something at the top, the bottom. Kaboom, looks pretty clear. Already heading into set number three. Sun's out. Beautiful. Whew. See if you maybe stay here on this one. Yep. See if you can kind of pick up. So on this one here, I'm gonna pick up some speed from here about midway up to where Ryan is right there. 
I'll pick up some good speed. You start at the bottom, and uh, I'm gonna kind of jog. I'll walk with good purpose, jog with good purpose, run with good purpose, and then sprint. And here we go. Oh, excuse me. Three, two, one. Wow. <laughs> With that level of intensity, I think I'm only gonna be able to do about three or four of those. So that was one. And this is gonna be set number four total. So what we'll probably do, we'll probably get a couple hot ones in the middle. Sets three, four, and five, maybe even six, and then all the rest will be backed off again. Whew. I had a uh, sprinting protocol when I was young that was made up by a strength coach, and it worked great. It was 10 40 yard dashes. It was sprint, it was, uh, it was walk two, jog two, sprint to, run to, jog to, and then walk to, whatever that is. Maybe it's 12 sets total, but that was the protocol and it worked perfect. And on all of them, I'd always walk back. The walk, walking back was always the rest. And as the intensity grew, um, I might take like an extra minute or so with the rest. And so that last one, the intensity was a little higher. So now you just sit down here for 30 seconds or so. We're looking for, if I had a heart rate monitor on, you want the heart to calm down. Let's see, I don't know if this will pick up any, noise wise, I don't know if this will pick up anything. But my heart's pounding pretty good. And so we want the, the air to come back, our wind to come back. If you don't have a heart rate monitor on, it's simple. You just want to be able to breathe in and out of your nose very comfortably. So that's what we're going to do. I'm, I'm there. That's good. So I'm going to... Well, that's basically what I'm going to do. I'm going to... I'll kind of walk, I'll jog, I'll bring the jog up a little bit, I'll run, and at some point, I'll try to gun it and sprint it. This is feeling really good. I've actually been able to sprint, like, I would say, I'm able to give it a good 90, 90%, 95%. Probably the first time I've felt that so far in my running. To be able to push that hard. Um, one thing, another thing that's important with sprinting is that Longer than like a four or five second duration is another opportunity to get hurt. So be cautious of that. Acceleration, another spot to get hurt. That's why you're not seeing me start fast. Starting fast will be done maybe sometime in the summer. But for now, I'm not going to do too much of that. If I had more space and it wasn't as crowded, I would just walk this off. I'd wa walk more of this break. 
rather than just stand here, but it's crowded. It's a little bit hard to get around people, so just chill and rest. This next one, gonna give it a good go again. And uh, the one after that, it will be my last sprint. And that one, I'll just sprint the whole thing. So that one will be like almost paced a bit because this hill, a hill on camera doesn't look like anything. It really doesn't, it doesn't look like much. But this, this hill is like, your car going up this hill is like, nah. Your car going up this hill is like, no, nah, I don't think so. So it's got some good grade to it. Um, how, how long is it? 100 yards maybe? I don't know. Maybe, maybe 100 yards. Maybe a little longer. It feels longer because it's a hill, you know? So it feels kind of deadly in a way. Heart rate's good. We're good to go. We got kind of a lot of people on the hill, so we got to wait a little bit. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> that was a good one right there. Hey -o. I felt probably the best at all of them. Getting a little hail up here. Crazy earlier today. Eating some grilled cheese sandwiches. <laughs> from a vendor down here and like their whole booth almost blew away enjoying some good times up here with my wife enjoying some food you go on vacation you know like kind of just depends on your goals but I think it's okay to enjoy some of the local foods let it all go a little bit um, you can still protein leverage you can still utilize a little bit of intermittent fasting, but really just have your output be good. So try to exercise. My exercise this morning was as many push-ups as, po as possible with good form. Um, so I did one set of that and that was it for today. And now I'm getting this in. Tomorrow will probably be similar. Tomorrow, probably longer run. Maybe do those push-ups again in the morning. That felt pretty good. I can tell, I can tell that I'm kind of done. My legs are, they're very tired from the activity. And this last one, I'm going to run the whole hill uh, pretty hard, but nothing too crazy, but I'm gonna just basically run the whole distance. Some of it I've been kind of managing where I'm sprinting and so forth. I am toast. I am totally done. <laughs> Not even by choice, but just rocked. So this next one will be joggy, then maybe two walks, and then out. Legs are burning. Whew. A lot of good hills out here. I'm sure you guys in the comments are gonna be like, oh, need to go do this trail or that trail. Maybe next time I come up. Whew. Excited. I'm going to be podcasting with Ted Naiman tomorrow, kind of the uh, 
godfather of protein leveraging. He's the one that presented a lot of these ideas to me. And uh, it's been on my radar for the last 10 years or so. Protein leveraging, basically the idea of if you increase the percentage of protein that you eat, you will be able to lose weight because protein is not necessarily an amazing energy source for people. Your main energy sources are carbs and fats and protein is kind of third on the list when it comes to energy value. <laughs> um, some people don't believe that protein should have four calories per gram and uh, I'm definitely one of those people. I'm in that camp. Um, but really either way is like the bottom line is if people bring up the percentage of protein that they eat, they will they'll start to lose some weight. And I made this statement before on my Instagram many times over. And people are like, no, the only way to lose weight is to be in a caloric deficit. I understand that that's what a caloric deficit means. Uh, it means that you're losing weight. If you're not losing weight, then you're not in a caloric deficit. I get it. However... If you bring up your protein percentage, you'll be eating less percentage of fat calories and or carb calories, maybe both in some cases, right? And then so you're mainly eating protein. When you start to eat a lot of protein, it usually drives your hunger down. And things that are really high in protein usually are very satiating. And Ted Naiman, who I'm going to talk to tomorrow, that's his entire thesis. And he actually has developed an app around this because he believes in it so strongly and he has a uh, satiety rating that he gives all every food that you can think of. Everything from a potato to a chicken breast. And uh, it's not always just protein because something like a potato might have a really high, might have a really high satiety value. Here we go. Slow jogging this one. Just getting a good leg drive, good arm drive. Now to kind of decompress, gonna walk two of these. Just good stride, open up almost, utilize it as a stretch. The cold, if you learn to lean into it, it feels great. You see people out here bundled up. It's understandable, it feels cold. But if you're just like, hey, this is just the way it is out here, then it might feel different to you. It's interesting trying to figure out whether to walk the hill to run the hill. You'll see some people just naturally choose to kind of run the hill and get up it a little faster. If you think about it, if you're able to get up the hill, you know, maybe, I don't know, 50% quicker or something, it might feel like you expended less energy. It might feel less taxing as opposed to it taking you maybe double that amount of time to get up there. It might feel like hell while you're doing it. So here we go, real simple. It's just a hill. And all we're gonna do is lean and walk. If you don't have access to hills, you could take advantage of doing some of this on a treadmill from time to time. I still wanna encourage you to get outside, but this is great exercise. Put your treadmill at 15 to 20. Try to walk at three. Maybe four. It's a lot, a lot of work. You put a treadmill at a 15, at a grade of 15, or even 10 or 12, put it at three or 3.5, do that 20 minutes a day. You'll start to lose some body fat. It'll be annoying though. You won't like it. That's a good way to burn some cows. 
Last one. This is all going right to my ass, by the way. Right to the booty. Could even use, utilize the downward as some training. Go heel, toe. And I feel a lot of this in my knees if I go real slow. But that pain that I'm feeling in my knees, remember, that's good. What is that? That's just pressure, right? It's just, it's mild. It's not, I'm not forcing myself to do something that hurts really bad. It's a mild, ir mild irritant in the front of the knee. But what is this going to do? It's going to help me pump the brakes. Like if I need to run and stop. Now look at this position that my knees are in, right? With every step, this is a nice opportunity. Could you go so slow that you could stop at any moment? You see my knees now, my legs are actually trembling a little bit from some of this. You can go so slow and you can start to go so low <laughs> that this gets to be really difficult. And we can also go like this. Toe, heel, toe, heel, or maybe even all heels. Could sprint up the hill too. But even walking up the hill backwards. Woo! Look, you go here, down the hill nice and easy, back up. That will torch your legs. How does that feel on the knees? It feels feels like I'm in my late 40s. <laughs> That's how it feels on the knees. You know, it feels stiff. But I also know that it's nourishing. Last one. My wife and I, the hotel that we're staying at, it's got some stairs and we agreed we got like seven flights of stairs. Like, let's at least take the stairs while we're here half the time. Like, that's reasonable. We don't have to force ourselves to do it every time. But how about we make a pact to do it half the time? It's a good extra exercise. This feels great though. Lean forward a lot. You can really get a good stride. Maybe you look a little weird to everybody else, but you know what? I looked a little weird doing lots of stuff. Woo! Ambulance is late, they missed me. <laughs> I needed them earlier to get some oxygen. You know, there have been a lot of comments on the sprints and stuff I've been doing. And some people are saying, you look really funny doing that, you look weird. You look different. I look different doing a lot of stuff. I look different making millions of dollars. I look different <laughs> when I squatted over a thousand pounds. I look different when I've bench pressed over 800 pounds. I look different and weird, compromised and strange with a lot of the things I did. Professional wrestling, a rap the music video. A lot of these things though, I put myself in these compromised positions on purpose. It gave me a lot of fulfillment and that made me feel good in my life. And these sprints, they might look a little funky now, but over time, I'm gonna to continue to get better at them. And eventually, I may not look pretty, but I'll be running pretty goddamn fast. That little journey right there took a little bit, but uh, a few minutes up the hill, a few minutes down the hill, not a huge problem. So, you know, try not to worry too much about how you look or being weird, being cringe. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's the price you pay. It's the cost of doing business. It's the cost of making videos. I'm gonna look weird, sound weird. Oh, I don't like you because you got a space between your teeth. Oh, I don't like you because you're sprinting and you're not lifting heavy anymore. Oh, I used to love it when you uh, talked about being fat and how you can't wipe your ass and now you're talking about being healthy and I think this is dumb. <laughs> you know, there's gonna, I can't please everybody with everything all the time. All I can do is gravitate towards the things that I enjoy and then I can share them and then hopefully 
a lot of you guys, hopefully it resonates with a lot of you guys, or you can utilize some of the strategies or some of the things I'm saying in your own life or in the lives of people that you love and care about. If it works out that way, I'm grateful. If it doesn't work out that way, I'm not gonna really sweat it too much. Some comments I make on taking Kratom or comments I may make about testosterone or really a lot of these things, these are just opinions. They're just my opinions. And I, and I personally believe that my opinions go a lot further and I think they're stronger than a lot of doctors and a lot of physicians that might be out there. Um, but that's okay, maybe somebody think that's crazy talk and that's fine, that's perfectly fine. But I just think that people that are, people that go to school that have to have a message, I think are a little bit different than people that are free to give whatever the fuck message they want. And I think that sometimes maybe my message gets misconstrued a little bit because if I talk about something like Kratom or even if I talk about testosterone, People are like, well, you are attached to like a TRT clinic. Like everything is thought of as a money play. And of course, why would I waste my time having a videographer video this right now if, if there wasn't some sort of end game towards profit, right? So of course, there's an end game towards profit, but I do my best to share what I think is best for other people to at least entertain and to think about. That's where I'll kind of leave it there because Things like testosterone, kava, kratom, your caffeine, your pre-workout, your vitamins, your minerals. I don't want you to take my word for it. I want you to take what, my, what I say, and I do want you to criticize it. Not with just like foolish statements, not with statements of hate, but with thought on your own of, that's interesting. I wonder what the truth behind that is. And then start to poke around and investigate that the best you can via Google or via uh, YouTube or whatever ways you have of uh, kind of digging a little deeper on some of these topics. But no, it's never my intention to like prove to you guys how right I am. However, I will say that I, I believe personally that I have a good gut feeling about a lot of stuff. You guys have heard me talking about testosterone for a really long time. I said in my brother's movie, Bigger, Stronger, Faster, which will probably hit the big screen, was actually a film that was actually in the movie theater, not just some streaming thing, okay? This movie was actually in the movie theater. It's one of the most famous documentaries of all time. My brother made the film Bigger, Stronger, Faster, and I said, quote, unquote, I said, I love steroids, and I'll probably be on and off them the rest of my life. And here we are many, many years later, and now, Many of your favorite podcasters, many of your favorite influencers, many of your favorite bodybuilders, many of your favorite people are now very openly, openly talking about testosterone, testosterone therapy, and so forth. And I am going to call things as I see them. I'm not just going to say, hey, I think TRT is great. I'm going to actually question some of that sometimes because the whole reason why I got involved in performance enhancing drugs was to be on a steroid cycle <laughs> and to get the benefits of that. I never was on anything for replacement. There are times where I've come on and off. There are times where I went a little lower with stuff, but no, make no mistake about it. I went on full blown steroid cycles. I think nowadays what you're starting to see from a lot of the clinics is they are trying to match what you could possibly get from a steroid cycle because they are not allowed to prescribe a steroid cycle. So I just want people to think about that a little bit more. I want people to think about, hmm, can I really just take 150, 160 milligrams and have that be really valuable for me? Or <laughs> do I need to blow? I know people think I'm crazy with this stuff, but I, I think those dosages are quite a bit off. Anyway, back to the topic. I was doing some sprints. That felt really good. At the moment, I'm gonna sprint or do sprint-like work two, possibly three times a week. They will be at different intensities. That intensity today was really good. I actually got in one or two sets that were very difficult. Um, and for me, for right now, that's about all I need. Hopefully I can get myself into a position where I can do five or six, and hopefully those five or six tough sprints are 
30, 40 yards plus. But for now, they're kind of short little stints rather than they are little sprints. Strength is never weakness. Weakness is never strength. Out here in Seattle, catch you guys later.